Hello and welcome to John Wesley's house. Uh, we are looking at Charles Wesley's bureau today. His bureau bookcase, like John's, dates to the 1700s, but his is actually slightly later. Let's have a look at it. It's made from walnut. Um, it's got a mirrored section, which opens up. The mirrors are probably slightly later. They're probably replacements. I imagine in Victorian times, um, but they look very much like the originals might have done. And let's have a look inside. Rests on these supports here. There we are. It's got a nice interior for letters and documents, and we've got some fake ones here you can see, so they fit quite nicely. And the section here opens up. Interesting, also the very old hinges here, very large hinges. And we've got some secret compartments here, which I'm going to lift out. Here we are, letter compartments probably, or for documents anyway. So you've got two, you've got one behind this column of support and another one behind here. And it's altogether a really nice quality bureau. Slightly uh, later, as I say, than John Wesley's, probably dating to about 1740, 1750, just before mahogany became fashionable. It's nicely made. Let's have a look at our drawers. Here you see the dovetailing again to give the drawer strength and stability. Very finely done. It's veneered on oak, so the front, that's walnut. And this is oak, very much the case for the time. Nothing unusual there. Very nice here with uh, candle supports that slide out. And yeah, we can have a look, hold up, look. So very nice. There's another one here, which would come out as well. So you would have had a little bit of light reflected in the mirrors, of course, as well, which would have been uh, very useful. If we open it up, let's have a look. Um, has some very nice divisions inside as well. Okay. So you could have, again, had your letters in these pigeonholes, but originally, actually, there would have been more pigeonholes here. And you can see the remains of those slots there. So you would have had one, two, three, four, five, and another five there. And that's probably where your letters would have been kept. Nicely done as well. Look also at here, the old metalwork. That's original, both very nice, top and bottom. And we're really lucky in that we have more than the bureau. We also have Charles Wesley's study chair here. So we'll have a look at that next. We're not sure whether the bureau and the chair were made for Wesley's house in Maryland or in Bristol, because Charles Wesley had both a house in Bristol and in Maryland, um, but likely the London house. So here we have his study chair. Now, the study chair is probably slightly later. We're probably looking at something from about 1760. This is in mahogany, so slightly different wood, even though it has almost the same colouring, um, in what is called uh, Chippendale style. This sort of fretwork at the back um, is often referred to as Chippendale. Um, very nice chair, quite wide as well, so uh, if you were slightly larger, you had a comfortable seat. Um, horsehair upholstery, uh, very interesting, very, very durable. Um, basically from, taken from a horse, spun into upholstery material, and it's virtually indestructible. So it lasts a good hundred years or longer. I think this is probably a replacement from the Victorian period. Now, let's have a look what it says here at the back. Um, the light's really rather bad for that, but never mind. The study chair of the Reverend Charles Wesley, the poet of Methodism, given to me some 30 years ago, by his eldest son, Charles Wesley Esquire of Musical Celebrity, and by me given to Mrs. Farmer of Gunnersbury House in the year 1861, Thomas Jackson. Thomas Jackson was a minister at Wesley's chapel. So uh, we've obviously had this chair for a very long time. And if we put them together, 
you get a, an impression of what it might have looked like when Charles Wesley would have been sitting by his desk. Very nice.